Today is the day of redemption. Um, Satan thought Satan thought at last he had won. Yes, he did. And he hung him on the cross. And he died. And the next thing he knew, he's standing right in front of him and he grabbed the keys out of his hand. Amen. <laughs> and he didn't know what to think. And ever since then, he's been mad at anybody that's affiliated with him and trying to get you tear you apart, tear your family apart in order to kill your testimony. Right. Because it's your testimony. Think about this. Without your testimony, where is the church? Defeated. Where is the church? There is no church. Right. So he's been trying for thousands of years now to kill your testimony. And he's been trying, and he's, he almost succeeded, and our federal government finally stood up and said, enough is enough. And said, no, we're not going to give that as a right to kill babies. Amen. See, that's a lie straight out of hell. And, you know, it's not... It's it's him him lying to Ken you know Ken Ken and I were talking last week and and he had called me and 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 um and I said you know I'm I'm glad you called I, you know devil tortures me after after the message and and he said well it's just lies and you know and it, it is it's the truth it is nothing but lies that's all he has he has no truth in him he has no truth in him so um so he's been trying to kill your testimony for years and kill the church's testimony for years and as long as we stand on the rock Amen. the rock of jesus christ we will continue and the word will continue and it will do what it was sent forth to do until he's ready to take us out of here. Amen. That's what he said. He says his worth, word will do what it was sent forth to do. It will go into all parts of the earth. <clears throat> <clears throat> in Romans the fourth chapter I'll be bouncing around so if you want to follow along you'll have to listen and, and write them down because I don't think I'm going to give you time to flip that fast <clears throat> Romans the fourth chapter the 23rd verse now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but also for us it shall be imputed to, to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised up because of our justification. <clears throat> Acts, the second chapter, and the 24th verse. Who God raised up, having loosed the pains of death. I like that. I really like that. Yep. Because it was not possible that he should be held by it. See, here's where, here's where we get stuck. And, and, I'm, and I'm telling you this because I know, because I'm right there with you. I'm in the flesh with you every step of the way, right? But the sooner we get in our thick head up here that death does not hurt us death does not hurt us we will do more for God 
And the reason I say that is because there was a man that God told to take his only son. I was just thinking, I could only imagine what, if God would have said that to me. When I had Kyle, and he said, I want you to take him up on the mountain. I want you to sacrifice him. But you know that man did that? Not even thinking twice. Because he knew, he knew, he knew that God was going to make it okay. No matter what. No matter what he had to do, God was going to make it okay. And that's where we get in, in a big mess. is because we look at all the things that are happening around us. And we look at all the things that can happen to us, Right? And we start thinking, oh my, well, what about this? And what about that? And what about this? And what about that? You know, instead of just trusting him. Just trusting him. Right? Just, Lord, whatever. I know you're going to walk with me through it. Satan will use hurts in our life against us. Right? He will use hurts in our lives against us. God takes those hurts and restores them. He makes something out of nothing. We can't we can't even I mean, could you imagine seriously, put yourself <laughs> in his shoe. He, you want me to do what? Take my son up there and put him on the altar? Are you serious? But that's what he told him. And he did exactly what God told him to do. And then, right before... See, this is where we have to go. We just have to keep going with him. We have to keep going with him. All right? And then we think we can't do any more. We can't, we just can't take it. There's enough is enough. Just keep going and he'll bring the lamb. And he'll bring him and say, now go get that and sacrifice it. See, we like to give up right before God has something good for us. Right? Because it's in our nature. We have hurts in our nature, right? We've been, we've been hurt since we've been little kids, right? You know, we have things coming against us all the time. We have sicknesses come against us all the time. We have... We have Doctors proclaim things over us that are that are only what they know. Okay? It's only what they know. Right? But if we just listen to what the truth tells us, right? If we just listen to what the truth tells us, there is no sting. Amen. I know it's hard because I'm right there with you, right? I, and I've been sharing with you, you know, Satan's been teach, torturing my kids and trying to get to me for years now. You know, the one was suffering with a, some depression, and it's my job to stand on his word. Amen. That's my job. I'm not supposed to look at the circumstances around me 
and let them dictate how I'm going to live. I'm supposed to trust in his word and let that dictate how I live. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. I need to start getting that through this little, I mean, just think of this. Do you know this brain's only about that big? And it makes, it makes it so hard. It really does. I mean, come on, look at the rest of your body. It's just so hard. But he tells us, he tells us in his word that he has everything under control. Everything. There isn't one thing that he hasn't went through. But yet sometimes we go through things and we think, well, nobody's ever been through this before. I'm the only one. I'm, woe is me. I, like, I really like the Eeyore. Everybody know who you are is? And he's always there and this, and I'm always there and my day. You know, and poor Eeyore, you know. And he just never had a break side. And that's why he had Pooh and Piglet and Tigger. And if you couldn't get happy around Tigger, something was wrong. <laughs> but we sometimes get stuck in that mess Romans 5 the 18th verse therefore as through one man's offense judgment came to all resulting in condemnation Condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the, th the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Amen. See, Jesus didn't do it just for the church. You may find this hard to believe, but you know he did it for Judas. Mm -hmm. And there was a point in Judas's life where if he just turned around and ran back to Jesus, everything would have been okay. Yep. Okay, but he made a choice. He made a choice. And that choice was to commit suicide. He made that choice. Okay? But if he had just turned around and said, Lord, forgive me, Jesus would have. Yes. And there would have been a different part of the book. There would have. So you got to remember there's things going on around us that are affecting us because of other people around the world that are not using the gift that God has given to all. <clears throat> and unfortunately, sometimes their decisions affect ours. First Corinthians 15, 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go through a couple of the Gospels. <clears throat> Matthew 28, 6. He is not here. Amen. He is not here. Amen. He is risen. Hallelujah. Luke 24. He is not here, but is risen. Amen. Mark 16. Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus in Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. 
He is not here. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to finish up with Isaiah, the 60th chapter, the first verse. Arise and shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Amen. Amen. You, church. Amen. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Yes. So when you want to act like Eeyore, remember <laughs> the ticker's right beside you, bouncing on his tail. Thank you. Really good. I like that, dude. And he'll pick you up. Amen. We're going to have communion this morning. Amen. And I would like a couple volunteers to come up and help me with communion. Oh. Father, we just ask to bless this. We know this is a special time. So, Father, we just ask a special blessing over this right now. Pour your spirit upon us right now, Father. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on up.